Now that we've done studying the gross income definition, let's have a quick discussion on steps that you should follow in a discussion question. So these are recommendations to you. If you comply with this, you should get the majority of your marks. So the first thing is, you will always provide the gross income definition. So you will state, during the year of assessment, it's a total amount, in cash or otherwise, received by or accrued to a resident, excluding amounts of your capital nature, but including the special inclusion. So you'll state that. Then, you will identify the problem and only discuss that. So you'll say, in this case, so let's say the issue, let me actually write it down. So, during the year, total amount, in cash or otherwise, received by, accrued to, resident, not capital nature, including special inclusion. You just state that. Then you will say, so let's say in this case, the capital is an issue, whether or not it's capital nature. So you'll say, in this case, the amount, so you'll just make one sentence that says, in this case, the amount was received in the year uh, in cash. It was received by the person who is a resident. And you'll state then, in this case, the issue is whether or not it is capital in nature. Then you're right. Note that the onus of proof is on the taxpayer, section 102 of the Tax Administration Act. So you can copy that exact sentence. And then you'll start addressing the principles from the court cases. So in this case, like I said, if it's capital, you'll start reading the question. You'll talk about his intention from the Stott case. The Fisser tree versus fruit if it's applicable. The change in intention. All of those type of rules you'll then discuss if it is necessary. Right, and then the special inclusions, guys. So this is part of the definition of gross income in section 1. If you see these amounts in an exam or in a question, these amounts must be included in gross income. Right, so you can go and study that section. Most of it is just these summaries, so you just need to identify them. So the first one is an annuity, guys. Very important. What are the characteristics of an annuity? It is an annual payment that is repetitive and someone has the obligation to pay. So, an annual payment doesn't mean it happens once a year. It can happen every day, every week, every month, every second week, whatever the case may be, but you consider it in terms of a year. So. Per year, you'll get 5,000 rands a month, or 60,000 for the year over 12 months. I would really say. Repetitive means it doesn't just happen one time, one year. It needs to happen more than once. And someone has an obligation to pay. It means someone must have a legal obligation to pay you. It can't just be, if I decide this year, I'm going to give you some money every month, but I don't have a legal obligation to do it, so I just want to help you out. Then it's not an annuity. Right, alimony. If you receive an alimony payment from your ex-spouse, so you get divorced and your ex-spouse wife, husband, needs to pay you, that will be included in gross income. But you'll also see the full amount will be exempt in terms of section 101U. Paragraph C is an important one. Right, very important, pops up every now and then, but simple. If you receive amounts for services rendered, so if you've done work and you've received, you've rendered a service to someone and you've received income, it will always be gross income. Right, this is to eliminate situations where it tries to say, that now your employer has not given you something. So let me quickly explain to you. So um, it's your birthday. Right, it's your birthday. Let's quickly go through this. It's your birthday. Your friends plus family give you a thousand rands. Will that be gross income? Right, is an amount that you receive, total amount in cash or otherwise received during the year. Um, by a resident, excluding amount of capital nature. So is it capital nature? Now, again, were you involved in a scheme of profit making? Were you in your mother's womb saying, I just want to get born so that I can make money from birthday presents in a scheme of profit making? No. So if people give you for your birthday, it's fortuitous, it's not capital, it's not gross income, it's capital in nature, you don't get taxed on birthday money. Right. Then at work, your work colleagues, colleagues, right, so your mates at the office, for your birthday, they give you 
a thousand rand as well. Is it capital in nature or gross income? Same as the friends and family, it's capital in nature. Right, your boss slash your employer, so I mean the person you you employed by the company or whatever the case may be, gives you a bonus on your birthday of a thirteenth check. And the reason for this is there's a policy at work that says if it's your birthday, the month in which is your birthday, you get a thirteenth check. Will that be gross income or not? Now, in this case, again, you didn't get born, or you weren't born in order to receive money, but this 13th check is a condition of your employment. It says, if it's your birthday, you will get money. So it's linked to the services that you've rendered, your employment contract, in terms of your employment contract. Therefore, that will be gross income. If you can prove that your boss is purely just giving it to you because it's your birthday, then it won't be, but again, you'll have to prove that. If you receive a restraint of trade, Right, it will be included in gross income. There are two there. Please note the first one is restraint of trade received by a labor broker or a personal service provider. Those are two classifications in the act that you'll study separately in the fourth schedule. More important, paragraph CB. So you, if you receive a restraint of trade, remember restraint of trade is where you say you've worked for me. Let's say we have a painting business. We paint houses and you worked for me. And now you want to leave, and then I say to you, I'm going to give you 50,000 rands, but then for five years, you can't paint in this same neighborhood as I am. Right. That 50,000, if it's linked to your employment, so if you were employed by me, or if you are going to be employed by me, in any way, it's your employer that paid you that. It will be gross income. If it's a completely random person, so you're a brand new painter, and you haven't worked for me ever, and you will never work for me, and I try and pay you to not come into the area, that will not be... Um, included in terms of this. That will be if I give you a restraint of trade. So let's quickly talk about this. Because special inclusions I said to you are amounts which get included because of the act. They might not be the requirements. Okay, restraint of trade. So I say to you, you want to come and do work, you are a painter, and I pay you to not paint in this area. Okay. What is that payment for? That payment I'm going for you is to stop your tree from producing fruit. So it's a payment that relates to your tree, to your capital. So therefore it is capital in nature. This just forces it to be included. But if you don't get it in respect of employment, which is what they say here. So let's say you did not work for me at all and I give you the money. Then it's not in respect of employment. Then it will be capital in nature and you will not be taxed. Right, any amount that you receive because they retrenched you or promoted you will be included. Any retirement lump sums, any lease premiums, any diesel improvements, anything where someone paid you for giving them knowledge, any fringe benefits. Right, paragraph JA, we'll see when you look also at trading stock. Anything that your employer or that the taxpayer manufactured in order um, as, that is similar to their trading stock. So let's say I am HP, Hewlett Packard Computers, and we make computers, laptop computers to sell to people. If I take one of those laptop computers that I made, which is usually trading stock, and I take it out of trading stock and I use it as a capital asset and I sell it later, although it is in capital, I will still include it. Right. Any dividends and foreign dividends and any recoupments. All of these amounts will be included. So these, just be on the lookout for it. You don't need to memorize it off by heart, but you need to be able to identify it.